I want to discuss more on a specific configuration in our bridge domain example, and that is the default gateway. We call it Pervasive Gateway or Pervasive SVI. And for those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm your cloud and data center. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. Now, let's add more examples. Let's say we have another web server and this web server is connected to our third leaf. And we're going to call this web2. There you go, web server2 with an IP address of 192.168.10. Let's say this is dot 3 and this is connected to leaf3 three, e3. Three. There you go. Now, what we're going to do is this web server2 this web server too will also be added as part of web EVG. So what will happen here is we're going to add um, or we're going to bind the switch and the interface where the web server two is connected. So this will be 103. Okay. This is the switch ID. And we also have E3. This is the interface ethernet three connected directly to our web server three. Okay, and let's say we also use uh, VLAN 10. Now, what will happen here is since both servers are in the same EPG, not only that, they're also both in the same network, 192.168, 10.3 and 10.5, they can communicate directly to each other. Okay, and when I say communicate directly to each other, it doesn't need um, contract, okay? And take note, um, this contract is specific to MySQL, okay? Well, ICMP is more universal, but um, they cannot communicate using other services such as web or, or any other services. Now, going back to the case of Web Server 1 and Web Server 2, since again, they are in the same EPG, they can freely communicate to each other. Now, let's have another example, okay? It's web server to database, but this time it's web server to, to database server. Okay, so we'll do this like what we did from the previous discussion, from the previous example. So what happens is if the web server two sends traffic to the database, obviously it goes to leaf three, okay? Because again, this is the switch directly connected to the web server. And maybe you're thinking, okay, what is the default gateway of um, the web server two? Well, there's no other default gateway, but 192.168.10.1. So here's what's gonna happen. This is also 192.168.10.1. Yes, believe it or not, 192.168.10.1 is available in this case in Leaf 1, Leaf 3, and if we have web servers connected to Leaf 2, 10.1 default gateway is also available in Leaf 2. This is what we call pervasive SVI. And we're going to talk about how this happens in a bit. Now, the Leaf 3 will, again, uh, process it, it will uh, replace it with VXLAN header, will remove the original header, and then it will drop it to the destination leaf. In this case, if it's leaf 2. Now, leaf 2, again, um, will replace it to the destination header, and this serves also as the default gateway 20.1 as it sends it to the destination endpoint, which is the database 192.168.20.4. Now, if you want to really understand the pervasive gateway and how the hell 
10.1 exists in two switches or it can be more switches not just two well aci um concept is a bit complicated but we can make it simple and here's what i'm gonna do like what i mentioned in the previous video okay think about this fabric okay the leaf and spine topology but this time it's much simpler with the use of aci um since we already have spines and leaves Okay, and doesn't matter how many spines and leaves we have here. Think about the fabric as one gigantic switch. Now, if you think about or if you imagine this, okay, as an entire fabric as one logical gigantic switch, it would be easier for you to understand the flow of the traffic in our ACI. So let's summarize what we have. So we have web server one, we have web server two, okay? What else? We also have database server. So this is the summary of our topology. And again, think of this as one switch. If you think this as a one switch, you don't really need to understand what's in between this line card. Well, let's assume this leaves our line card. You don't need to know how the line cards connects to the fabric modules and how fabric modules connects to the line card. Not only that, if you configure an SVI in this switch, okay, in this switch, let's say our SVI is 192.168.20.1 and the other SVI is 192.168.10.1. Now this SVI is not per line card. Okay, you don't configure or add 192.168.10.1 per line card. This SVI is here is for the entire switch. So if this web server sends the default gateway, the 10.1, yes, it exists here. The 10.1 also exists in this leaf. Okay, as a matter of fact, the 10.1 exists on the entire switch. Okay. But in our discussion or by concept, we call this pervasive SVI. I know for some of you, you still have trouble understanding because it's all new and different. But we're just starting. More to come in the next video.